share it with you. Um, I haven't been doing much YouTube because I've just been doing a lot of stuff in real life. Um, I helped with some flowers for a wedding. I'm actually helping with more flowers for a wedding in a few weeks. And um, yeah, I've just been very busy with projects. I'm still working on my graphic novel. I've been making some changes to that. So trying to devote some time to it. Um, I've also been doing some canvas paintings, which is kind of exciting, some acrylic canvas paintings. Um, I've done them in the past. It's not really new for me, but it is, I've been doing them more often. You can purchase it in my shop. I uh, just had a shop update recently that went really well. If you purchased from that, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, I am going to be doing another shop update with some fall, um, fall and wintery kind of things uh that will be coming soon it'll have products and prints as well as some original paintings i'm really excited because i got i know that you love the or some of you love the oval canvas paintings that i have done before so i got a few sizes including a massive well it's not really massive but it's kind of big for me to sell online at least but um, this big circle canvas, let's see, it's 20 inches. So that's going to be really fun. I have some ideas for that, but I'll save that for another time. Um, a lot of you have been coming here to YouTube, I think, from my Skillshare class, which is really exciting for me. I'm really happy that that's like still going strong and there's still people taking it. I do have another one in the works. It's like, I have so many things happening at once. I'm working on my graphic novel, I'm working on things for my shop. I'm working on pet portrait orders, which maybe I might cut off soon for a little bit. And then I'm working on um, this new class, which uh, we'll be talking about how to illustrate how to draw and paint clothing on your characters. So my previous class was about animal character design and I think that this next one is not going to focus necessarily on adapting clothes for animal characters but more just about drawing like draping fabric and textures and things like that because um, that was something that was highly requested on Instagram when I took a poll about my next shop, my next my next class. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, that is in the works. I know I've been saying that for like a long time, but occasionally when I get a chance, I like go in and I edit things or I write down um, things I need to talk about for it. So it is coming eventually. Um, but for now, I thought that since so many of you are from Skillshare, you might enjoy another video where I kind of talk through my process of um, of, of a whole painting of an illustration now this is not in real time because this painting um that i did all pop it up on the screen probably took something like i don't know 10 hours so it's not going to be a 10 hour long video i have sped it up and i've cut some things out that weren't really super important for you to see but i will go through um while it's playing and kind of give some commentary about what I'm doing, what kind of technique I'm using, why I'm choosing what I'm choosing. So I hope that you'll find it helpful and interesting. Um, even if you're not an artist, I hope that you'll enjoy seeing this. This illustration is the print of the month for my print club members on Patreon. So I've made some changes to Patreon. If you haven't checked it out in a while, I now just have three tiers, which makes it a lot more simple and easy to understand. So there's now one tier for print club and that is whether you're in the US or anywhere worldwide. Also, there's a tier that 
is $5. It gets behind the scenes um, and access to polls and things like that for new products for my shop. I really did take into consideration everything that my patrons were voting on for this past uh, shop collection. And um, I'm also sharing, you know, sketches and a monthly video there that's usually like a little sketch process video. Um, and then, yeah, the middle tier is the print club and they get all of those previous rewards. And then the top tier, which is $20, also gets a monthly newsletter where I, in detail, talk about what I've been up to and also give some more detailed uh, information about the progress of my graphic novel. So, with that being said, if you like this illustration and you would like to get a print of it, they're limited edition, um, 50 are available, so the first chunk of those are going to my patrons, and if any are left over after July, then they will go in my shop, but when they're sold out, they're gone. So if you're interested, please just check out the link below for my Patreon, but I will stop talking now and get started with the painting and show you my process. Okay, so I'm going to share with you my process. Um, the sketch process is being shared with my patrons over on Patreon for the $5 and up tiers. So if you want to see how I kind of came up with my composition and everything, you can check that out. I did start the background before filming because I was a little bit nervous and unsure what I was doing. Um, backgrounds are still something that I struggle with and I don't feel fully confident. But what I did was I started going in um, with these little shelves. So the idea is that it's like a picture ledge, <clears throat> a picture ledge or some kind of a uh, shelf and I went in with the shadows and did that uh, first and then a wash of blue. Here also I went ahead and started Wesley. Part of the challenge of this is that I have already drawn these characters and I'm really happy with how they look um, just as like a standalone character drawing and so to then draw them again like a year later doing something it can be a little bit nerve-wracking but I usually go in with watercolor and then I might use the white jelly roll pen to add in some texture. And you'll see later that I go back in on Wesley's fur and kind of start to layer browns over that. Um, working on Charles, the sea otter, his head is white. So the technique is a little bit different. Um, I go in with various shades of gray and brown referencing photos. Um, a really great resource that I like to use when I'm drawing animals as I go to Joel Sartori's uh, animal arc, photo arc uh, website where he has photographed a lot of animals including endangered species. Um, but he just has really high quality photos where you can see the colors and the fur and the textures. Of course, never, you know, just straight up copy a photo, but in terms of referencing the angle of a face or um, or the colors of the fur, it can be really, really helpful to do that. Sometimes you think that you know what something looks like and then you see a photo of it and you realize that you didn't really realize what it looked like or really know what it looked like. So anyway, I am just layering grays and browns and I'm using Holbein watercolors uh, for the fur. And you see me going back in on Wesley with some white. And you can see that I skip around quite a bit because sometimes I'm letting something dry, but sometimes I need to kind of live with that part of the painting for a while and then, you know, worked on, work on, in this case, the foreground to kind of decide how, you know, how far I want to take the, uh, you know, the darkness or the contrast and the fur. I just want the whole painting to feel balanced. I also decided that my background dried a lot lighter than I wanted and I needed to go back in and kind of make it feel a little bit more rich. You will find that with watercolors that they just dry a lot lighter than you're expecting. So if you're wanting more of like a moody background like I was, you're probably going to need to do a few layers. Um, I also wanted a little bit more contrast in certain areas. My idea for this painting is that they're sitting at um, the bar in this tavern and the light is coming in from a left hand side window. Um, so I wanted it to kind of get darker as it got towards the right side of the page or where Charles the sea otter is sitting. 
So um, it was a little bit challenging to make sure that everything blended okay, but I do really appreciate getting to see some of like the blooms and the watercolor. You can see where the background meets the table in the left hand side, there's a little bloom there, which I really like. Um, I actually didn't have a super firm plan. Um, my idea for the background was that I was gonna go in and for anything that was like a warm tone, like wood or gold or something, I was just gonna add this little hint of peach um, because it's not like it's underwater or something, but I wanted it to recede and feel kind of dim. Um, so I, just, I my original plan was that I was going to go in with pen and do details in the back, but you'll see that I didn't end up doing that. But again, this is a circumstance where I did the background, I'm letting it dry, and I'm thinking about how I feel about it, but I know that I'm not going to be sure about which direction I'm going until I've completed the front characters. So I am using watercolors to do Charles and Wesley's uh, clothing. In this circumstance, I want them to be in the same clothes that I originally drew them in, in their character illustrations. Um, I made these characters back in 2016, I believe, for the first time. And then as my style was changing and progressing, I decided to do them, um, do an updated version of them last year. Um, yeah, which is uh, good because I'm happy with how they look, but also because the original characters are like stolen and being sold by someone else on Society6, which really stinks. And I've, I've fought it, but I can't get it to go away. So that is a lesson when you post your stuff online to work a signature in somewhere where it's not super easy to Photoshop out or put on a watermark or something because... It just, ha I mean, it, it can feel kind of negative to have to do that, but um, I take it on a case-by-case -case basis, but I've had so many things stolen that it just really stinks. So anyway, I wanted to make sure that their clothes matched up with how I had done them previously. For uh, Charles' uh, coat here, his rain jacket, I'm using gouache, and you've probably heard me talk about this before, how I do like to work with gouache a lot of the time because it creates more of like an opaque which looks more like it's on him and not like it's receding behind his sweater or something. So I'm going in with just like a pure yellow color but then also a little bit of ochre for the shadows. And the gouache I'm using is the Artist, uh, I think like Art, Artist Loft, Artist Decor brand from Michael's Crafts. It's just really cheap kind. Um, and then the jelly roll for his whiskers. And you can see that like it might be kind of scary to go in and add whiskers to your character, but it can really add a lot of personality and interest. Um, and also like a little bit more dimension to your piece. Um, so going in with the 0 .005, I think, a Micron pen. And then sometimes I go back over the black pen with the jelly roll and it can kind of create like a gray layered effect. And the jelly roll also likes to be a little bit more um, raised. So it has a little bit more like actual physical texture to it. And for the outlining of the jacket, you'll see that I end up only doing part of it um, initially and I think I'm choosing the O2 size because um, I wanted it to just have a little bit more thickness. I like to be more delicate with their faces and like the little fur accents but um, for the clothing I prefer to do a slightly thicker one. I don't outline every single part of it but just areas where there are folds or where I think it just balances out the piece well. I started filming from directly on top for this part because I I felt like my camera was going to kind of be struggling from an angle to show everything but then of course my hand is directly in front of it. I know that there, um, I've gotten some comments in the past about things being out of focus or coming in and out of focus as my hand comes into the screen. So I used my iPhone for this part so that I could kind of show you um, more of an aerial shot of, uh, of the detail. So hopefully this works out a little bit better. And I should say that throughout this, I'm continually going back and referencing my original drawings that I did just to make sure that like I'm 
putting his buttons on the same side and um, you know that the tone of green is the same and that the yellow is the same um, because I'm not always using you know paint straight out of the tube a lot of it is mixed so I have to be able to um, remix those colors if if it is one that didn't come out of a tube and um, after I added like a little bit of pen detail on the like collar part of his sweater I decided that I wanted to go in with watercolor to add a little bit more of like some dark shading I wanted it to be softer and not just like a wash of watercolor with pen on it so that's what I'm doing now and depending on your picture sometimes you might um, make the shadow color um, a little bit more cool toned so adding a little bit of blue to it it just it, depending on the lighting or or the you know wall color or whatever in your room it can affect the color of shadows but um, making it cooler does kind of make those areas recede and also I mean I'm making them darker as well I think that I had a more pigmented uh, mix of paint there so like less water which is going to make it darker with watercolor so when you're working with watercolor you don't necessarily need to make something darker or more saturated by adding black to it you can do that but if you have less water it's going to be um, you know the little pigment particles are going to be closer together and it's going to look darker overall or more intense of whatever color you are working with now I'm going in to add some shadows on the table with watercolor. I already went in with colored pencil and did a little bit of like texture and shadow, but um, this actually, this might be gouache. Some of the little blobs of paint that I have on my palette are like, you know, I've been using them for a while, so I can't always tell what it is, but if it's doing what I want it to do, that's all that really matters to me. So just kind of remembering the direction of where I wanted the light to be coming from and also just kind of makes those little objects, the, the food and stuff on the table look like they're really sitting there. So um, we have Charles has some sea urchins in his basket and then Wesley has, I'm doing like fish and chips for him. Um, and I guess that was where I finished filming. It took me a while to think about um, the colors and the color balance. And also I did decide to add an extra like empty uh, pint glass behind, uh, behind Wesley just for the composition. It felt like there needed to be something there. Um, sometimes you just have to improvise to make the composition work better. Once things get colored in, um, objects like start to stand out and you want to make sure that it has a good flow as far as you know your storytelling goes and that nothing feels too empty. Um, I also like adding in little details like the water ring that's partly on the napkin and partly on the table. Uh, it was something that when I first started getting like reviews of my portfolio, um, I would be told that my work was like too twee, so like too quaint and too perfect sometimes. And I think that's just adding in like little, even though this still is obviously very like quaint, I think adding in little imperfect details, I think that it can help to make it feel a little bit more interesting and a little bit unexpected. So as you're working on scenes, what can you do to make the characters feel more real and tell the story and just add interest? Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you've not checked out my Skillshare class, I will also link that below. If you use the link below, you'll get a certain amount of time for free on Skillshare, which is really nice so you can take my class completely for free, but it does help me out when you use that link. So I really appreciate your time and I hope that you enjoyed this. And please feel free to comment below if you have any questions about my materials or my process and I will try to get back to you with an answer. All right, see you next time, bye.